Gifted students, what was it like growing up as the smart kid? Has it affected your adult life in any way? It was pretty cool for a while, but then everyone caught up to me in high school and now I'm just a little above average intelligence. I entered a culture where everyone, teachers, parents, relatives etc valued me for my smarts and so I used that as my yardstick to value other people for a long time. Nowadays I'm more interested in who shows compassion, loyalty, dedication, generosity, humor, etc had to work really hard to break the filters. Holy crap dude, everything on this thread is crazy familiar. Now that I'm out of school, I realize how much of my self worth I wrongly placed in my grades GPA. I feel this, it's not something you notice until you suddenly realize you don't have an external benchmark, however misplaced. To tell you that you're doing okay. Skipped a grade, which I probably could have used to become more emotionally mature. Cried a lot in math class. I'm still gifted with a terrible work ethic. Been there. Bonus points if your parents always noted that and the congratulations of course we knew you could do it. Your smart glided through high school and college to a job currently. Almost zero work ethic to speak of and it eats me up inside that I have to exert a ridiculous amount of self control to make myself do anything more than the bare minimum. I skipped a grade. So, no one saw me as the smart kid but instead as the diminutive 13 year old 9th grader in pre-calculus. You learn to keep your mouth shut. It wasn't that great. Yup, I always hated I was youngest in class. Almost always till master's degree. Everyone in my program was the smart kid. Some people have trouble adjusting to an environment in which they are now thoroughly average. Most definitely, going from the top 3% or so of my 40k college to grad school is was rough. Definitely have learned that academia is not the place for me. Haha <laughs> it's terrible. For one. You develop terrible work ethic because you never had to study when you were younger. Then comes Procalc and you have no clue what you're doing wrong and how to bring your grade up. When people start doing better than you and you become more average, you start becoming a bit disconnected with who you are as a person. For all your life you've identified as the smart one. Now you have no idea. One thing I missed going from an excellent student in high school to an average one in college was the attention I'd get from teachers as the smart one. I'd always feel they were generally looking out for me more. Of course, it didn't help that college class sizes were gigantic, but that anonymous feeling got to me. A bit embarrassing to admit. Hard, I skipped 4 years in school. It took me years to come to terms with the fact that I'm allowed to do what makes me happy, not what people expect because you have so much potential. When I applied to music school my mother's friends openly criticized her for letting me do it, because they couldn't understand why I wasn't moving into a brainy career path like medicine or law. Still get a lot of family members asking why I'm not doing this job that they think I'd be perfect for. I'm a nurse and family friend that have known me a while ask all the time why I didn't become a doctor. It's the most annoying thing ever. I am happy with my choice and prefer the day to day aspects of nursing much more. Yeah, it made me lazy. I used to be the smart kid, now I'm the nose a couple of things guy. It was boring until I discovered drugs and sex since I was acing all my classes anyway. Then I had a kid at 17. Gifted kids don't necessarily have a lot of common sense, not in my case anyway, but you get your crap together like everybody else, eventually, anyway. I was the typical overachiever until university, when I had a mental breakdown and developed depression and an anxiety disorder. Turns out, being intelligent doesn't help so much when the family history of mental illness hits you in early adulthood. Not going to lie, you grow up feeling kind of entitled to good test scores grades, and when that doesn't actually happen you start re-evaluating your life. Then, when you take classes with other gifted kids, and see that you're part of the average section of that group, you reconsider every academic achievement you've received. Haha, <laughs> I'm still a top student in my grade, still too lazy to do my homework, not as much as others though, but I stopped getting upset when my test scores didn't surpass those of my friends. Yup, I was always a top student through high school and undergrad at a small liberal arts school without too much effort. And then I went to grad school at an Ivy League medical school where everyone was a top student from their respective pasts. It was a rude awakening to be average. 
we're still learning about subject and predicates in freaking high school, and making posters too, when you factor in the two years of core curriculum in college, it felt like my life was in repeats for the first 20 years, now I'm so tuned out I'll never get back the frequency and make something of myself. Yes, in math and English, it was so repetitive from grade 6-12, drove me crazy. I didn't have the experience that many other people here have. I went through gifted from elementary till high school. It was freaking great. I basically realized that rules only apply to those who want to obey them. I used to leave classes no questions asked, no first hour class, no problem. After high school I got two degrees in math and physics, not two majors, two degrees. I went on to get a PhD from a top three school in physics. A lot of my success has come from understanding when to blow off meaningless bureaucracy, which the gifted program definitely gave me. Early on in high school I discovered I could coast with no effort, went to college because it was expected of me, didn't know what to study, and found out I didn't know how to study face obstacles. Basically, I went in with this idea of I'm smart and when I got in trouble academically, I still clung to that and made a huge mistake. I started telling myself I wasn't really trying. You see, if you don't actually try, you don't fail. Or so I thought. I was thinking like well of course I'm smart. If I really tried I would succeed. But I didn't really try. It didn't help that I was going through some major depression at the time and was rather socially isolated. Anyway, two semester and some bad grades. I dropped out. I built the whole thing up as a bujeeman in my mind and for years I avoided going back. Finally I did, and in a lot of ways, I felt deprogrammed. I was no longer a smart outcast. Now I was a guy in his mid-twenties attending classes with kids straight out of high school. Pretty humbling, but the whole thing was good for me. I can honestly say I was glad not to have the same pressure on me, or the same expectation to excel. Going back was a great decision, although I do find myself wishing I've done it earlier. Mostly the consequence of the whole thing has been that I'm always feeling like I'm playing catch up in my life. Like, here's where I was supposed to be in my late 20s, and here's where I actually am. It hasn't. Work ethic matters way more than what score you got on an IQ test. I wish more people understood this. I have seen lots of brilliant people fail out of college or not even try. The people who persevere, who can delay gratification, they are the ones who succeed. This is why the world is run by C students. It was really bizarre in my case because not only was I considered immensely intelligent throughout school, but I also had ADD kick me in the nuts when I was around 10 or 11. The first 5 years of school I was really into everything because everything was a totally new concept, and I just really enjoyed exploring these new things and excelled at it all. I recall a time in 5th grade, when my mom who was currently taking a college math course was having trouble understanding the advanced algebra textbook. And I picked up the book and was able to understand all the material rather quickly. Shortly after 5th grade passed all the new material for all the following years was just like okay. So this is how you make the math you learned last year a little more complicated. And this totally disinterested me because I really had already learned most of that material before it even came up. Since I was disinterested, my ADD tendencies decided it was better to draw pictures and screw around both in class and at home, rarely ever completing assignments. It was almost as if it was mentally impossible to focus. I had years where I would get the breakdown of my grade, and in the assignment column it would say something like 16% but then the quiz and test columns would have 98%. Not that it's a good thing, but it's still one of my favorite stories, is when I was taking AP Calculus, and I had gained a reputation for myself as being the goof off, and never doing anything at all. The final test at the end of the class was worth 65% of the total grade, and when it came up to the time to do the test, I currently had 5% in that class. The teacher sat me down at a few points and even recommended I drop the class to take something easier but I refused. When the test came, I scored 114%, it was grades on a curve and I was a major outlier, so guess who passed with a C. Besides all those stories, the hard thing about the real world is just that life doesn't work to where you can do nothing and then ace the test. You have to do every single little step along the way, as menial and useless as those steps may seem, 
The real world will always take the guy that averages a C on everything and maybe squeaks out a B on the test over the guy that says frick the stupid crap and still gets 100% on the final test, metaphorically speaking. Lack of discipline, bad work ethic, started becoming more and more lazy and even falling behind everyone else. Even now, studying at the university, I fail pretty much all of my exams the first time I take them, cause I never actually learned how to study in the first place. Lonely, because few share your interests. Lonely, because displaying, showing off, an intellectual gift brings as much resentment as it does praise. Brains are particularly susceptible to resentment because, unlike say soccer or dancing, no one says hey, you're great at that. Thinking just is not my thing lol. Everyone fancies themselves to be intelligent, even though everyone can't be. Lonely, because most people would rather not be corrected, no matter how interesting you personally find the actual accurate information. This might not be clear to you for the first few decades. Actually, did you know that carrots don't substantially aid eyesight oh? And actually the Pennsylvania Dutch are German. Dutch is an American corruption of Deutsch and, hey, where you're going? Lonely, because stories puzzles converse that move slow enough to engage most people are interminable to you, and those that move fast enough for you are unintelligible for everyone else. Lonely because what makes you different can't be seen, so others who like you might walk right by, and not seek you out. There's no uniform, like a sports jersey our punk rock hair to indicate that you're in the 1%. Lonely, because logic is your favorite tool, but it is rarely used and often misapplied. Relationships, religion, politics, social situations, it is often offensive to apply logic to them. But, you're a logic guy. Lonely, because the world is not made for you. So, a little lonely. Very poetic. The inflated ego helps a lot with confidence. I would say that's not true, at least not for everyone. You can be smart and yet think you're average or a bit dumb. Like you're always achieving impressive feats in university and stuff, but still thinking that it was mainly chance that drove you there. Well, that's what happened to me anyway. I have insight for this thread, but too lazy to type it up. Good summary. I am not exceptionally gifted, just an average guy who gets straight B's in school, but I went to a middle school where a disproportionate amount of the kids were practically developmentally delayed because of poor parenting practices. The teachers knew this, and they were used to handling these kids. There is this Japanese saying, the stake that sticks up will be hammered down, and as a cognitively ordinary kid, I was frequently the youngest in my classes because I was the only one who had never been held back at some point. I ended up frequently taking on my teachers and calling them out on their crap, like trying to tell me the word aftershave wasn't a real word and trying to ban me from reading Harry Potter. It resulted in a relatively combative middle school experience. I recall one incident in 7th grade where I was made to sing along to Humpty Dumpty along with a group of 1st graders. At one point, the teacher stood up and asked everyone, Okay, who thinks this sing-along is supposed to be childish three guys, myself included, stood up. We were the only ones to do that in a group of 25. She kicked us out of class and made us clean the yard. I don't regret that crap one bit. But, as a teenager, I think it caused me to be somewhat more combative toward authority figures than I should have been. I think it was because of this that I ended up being rather shy as an adult. I am perfectly secure in my intellectual and analytical prowess, but consciously awkward when it comes to social interactions. I have always felt an immense pressure from my family, parents and my parents' close friends who are like my aunts and uncles. To work hard and not squander the gift I was born with. I will be receiving my PhD in biomedical science and translational medicine next Friday. My current work focuses on identifying a novel protein complex that is involved in triglyceride metabolism. Hopefully I'll lived up to their expectations and can leave something behind in this world to benefit mankind. Or a pharmaceutical company hires me and pays me a boatload of money. I often found myself in the 90 plus percentile on reading comprehension and math, took all gifted classes in middle school, graduated high school early, as kid, I always wished I was much smarter, I wanted to be a genius, instead I have mediocre smarts, I still do this as an adult, but now I also realize how little other people think at times, most of the time. 
It was hard. Intellectually, I was way ahead of my peer group, but emotionally and socially I wasn't. When I was moved forward a grade, I ended up being the youngest kid in my classes. All of them. So when my classmates were all getting their driver's licenses, I wasn't. When they were all allowed to see the naughty movies, I wasn't. Their parents set curfews that were usually later than mine, because I was younger. And puberty. Well, puberty was a very difficult time. I got into a lot of trouble, too. Even though I was a full academic year ahead, I was still not very intellectually stimulated. So I started trying to find ways to keep myself amused. These ended up not being very well thought of by authority figures. And then there were all the problems I had with bad habits. When you don't have to work at anything, intellectually, you're completely unprepared for those things that do require work, like essays, partner projects, etc. So you end up missing out on a lot of study skills, which all have a direct corollary to adult skills. As an adult, it has all basically led to a sense of unfulfillment. I don't think of myself as lazy, like some of the other commentators here, but I certainly lack the organizational skills that a less intelligent person was forced to develop, because previously, I just kept it all in my head. Now, of course, there are far too many things going on, and they last so much longer, that it's virtually impossible to keep everything in my head. But I lack the discipline and skill necessary for, say, a schedule book. Intelligence is not wisdom, and it is not common sense, and it is not discernment. It is, however, unfortunately, very highly regarded as a standalone product when, as a standalone product, it does not really add value. In other words, while I am able to learn things extremely quickly, I don't always know what things I should learn. And while I may be able to quickly and easily see logical faults, I don't always have the social skill to deftly bring them to light. In essence, I think my life would have been much, much simpler and easier if I weren't so smart. I got into my state's gifted high school program which, unlike most of its kind, included all four core subjects instead of just math and science. It was amazing. College level chemistry, calculus, literature, and geography. Interdisciplinary coordination of all four subjects. For example, we studied logic in math class while covering rhetoric and language and holding debates in a US government course. Video conferences with topic experts simulcast to all participating schools. A half dozen field trips each year. The opportunity to participate on a first robotics team, which was just a magical experience. The same five teachers for all four years, who became our mentors over time. And the same 20 classmates, who became my best friends. We even did an annual culminating project that required us to do original research to answer a question no one ever had before. We worked on this project throughout the school year, and it counted as the final exam grade in all courses. These experiences broadened my perspective, brought me out of a thick shell, and got me hooked on exploring the universe. I can't thank those teachers enough. I am incredibly fortunate to have experienced all of this for free, in a public school system, right here in the US. It truly was a model for how secondary education should work, and I owe much of my understanding of the world to that school district. I was the smart kid up until high school, never studied, everything was easy, advanced reading blah blah blah, now I am a C plus B student and have no freaking clue how to study. My nephew actually had serious academic issues because of how smart he is. Hear me out. Up until high school, he didn't have to study whatsoever and he could do all of his homework on the bus. When he started HS, he had no idea how to study and sitting down to actually concentrate on homework was difficult for him too. It probably didn't help that his narcissistic butthole mother declared that he was a child prodigy a little too soon. God dang do I hate my sister-in-law. If he has to study in high school, he can't be that smart. Clearly he knew how to do homework since he previously did it on the bus. Well, I almost always felt like a fraud when people would mention I was gift because I didn't feel gifted. I thought everyone was like me. My junior year of college when I actually gave my all to a class and still got a B+. Frick you accounting. Where I finally understood that things don't come easily to people sometimes and they really just can't comprehend a subject. As an adult I don't know if it's affected me much, I probably have an ego that's too big, 
but I feel like interpersonal skills and work ethic are gonna get my further in life than natural smarts. College students, what is the dumbest thing you've heard a fellow student say? When I first moved into a house off campus, I shared the top floor with a surprisingly slow-witted guy. He was quiet and had an overnight job, so I really only saw him when we were all drinking or hosting a party. Over Christmas, an old friend was hard up for cash, so I bought his childhood NES and game collection. Probably overpaying since half my purpose was to help this guy out. It was a hit on our tiny TV. Most afternoons, a few people would be gathered around for some Tecmo Bowl or RC Pro-Am. Over spring break when I had the place to myself, I beat the original Metroid. Good times. Then, near the end of the semester, just before dawn in the haze after a huge party, some strangers walk in and start hauling off our TV, stereo, etc. My upstairs Floma confronts them, and one of these shady intruders says, We're with the electronics repair service. We'll have these back to you right away. This guy proceeds to hold the door and help them with our old VCR. Most of the house had theater majors, so studying particular performances was legitimate homework, and then my NES. They even got the cartridges, but when they started hauling out CDs he finally became suspicious. The specific dumbest thing, regarding strangers who show up 5am and start hauling off the most valuable items from our front room was, they told me they were the electronics repair crew, so I helped them get everything out to their van. We had someone else living in that room the following year. I mean these people wouldn't scam people like that if no one fell for it once in a while. I was assigned a two person group project and a partner. She tells me straight up, I'm too busy for this, you can do it. Tell her that's not how it works, she'll have to do her share. She doesn't care, or respond to any further email on it, so I do all the work. Hand it in with a cover letter, explaining she did nothing. I get 90%, she gets 0%. In front of the whole class she says, Gangler but is a piece of crap and gave me 0 on the this assignment. It's not fair, and he's a freaking butthole. Professor, oh, well, he informed me you didn't do any of the work on the project. Was this not the case? Girl, that's not how IT works. A group project means we all get the same mark. No matter how much work you do, IT means one person gets a break from the assignment. Professor, nope, that's not how that works. I love people who fight really hard when they are clearly in the wrong. It's just an amazing sight, like a bald eagle doing trig on an abacus. Beautiful. When they abort the baby, does it die? But you can't OD on alcohol, you just digest it. Both overheard from different people during an upper division medical ethics class. In an ethics class, a girl decked out in a horrible clash of designer name brands on every article of clothing and personal position raised her hand and said, The difference between rich people and poor people is that rich people know how to say thank you. We were discussing the differences between wealthy and poverty level treatment in a courtroom. Also, in a final exam for a criminal procedure class, there was a typo. I forget what it said, but it was supposed to say mortal as in mortal wound. Everyone pretty much made out what it was supposed to say through the context of the sentence. Except this one girl. She went up to ask the teacher what the misspelled word meant and he announced to the class the correct spelling. She stood there and asked him what mortal meant. He just looked at her and said in the dead silence of a final exam, your fourth year criminal justice major in a criminal procedure class, I am not going to explain to you what a mortal wound is. I thought Ben Franklin invented lightning. This was said during a class on western civilization. What a dong. Who knows how many lives lost to brush fires he's responsible for. During an MBA marketing class, we had group projects where we basically had a set of data given to us to come up with a marketing plan. One group took the customer data and proudly averaged all of the customer's zip codes to get the geographical center of their customer base. Later in the professor's office, they argued when the prof told them it didn't work that way. The team leader said, well, that's just your opinion and stomped out. Actually a week ago. We had just gotten out of our final exam for the year, and this girl is making her way to the door. But before she even reaches it, she says to her friend, Yeah, I had to copy a few parts of my book to reach the word count. You ever hear a record scratch in real life, and that 90s meme following it? That pretty much happened. 
The teacher called the girl up to the front and silently, without a word began to go into the paper logs and saw that Turnitin had a 75% plagiarism rate. It was, well, for her, it probably sucked but, but for the rest of us, golden city of how do you frick up this bad. I had a friend ask me if the IRS was going to come after him since he did not pay his internet bill for 3 months. Tell him yes. It was in a match class when a teacher was trying to get a girl to understand that 1 stroke 3 is larger than 1 stroke 4, but she wasn't having any of it. According to her, 1 stroke 4 was larger because there are 4 1 stroke 4s to make a hole and only 3 1 stroke 3s to make 1 2. So there are more 1 stroke 4s, more is larger. Therefore 1 stroke 4 is larger. Even when the teacher tore a piece of paper in 3 and another in 4, wrote 1 stroke 3 and 1 stroke 4 on the corresponding papers, threw everything away but 1 1 stroke 3 and 1 1 stroke 4 and asked her which is larger she still went for the 1 stroke 4. Teacher sat down, didn't say anything for a minute and then continued class. That was the first time I'd ever witnessed someone giving up on a person like that. I seem to remember A&W advertised 1 stroke 3 pound burgers in comparison to the, I think, McDonald's 1 stroke 4 pound burgers for the same price, but due to people thinking a 1 stroke 3 was smaller no one bought them. <laughs> Professor here, student was upset that I didn't send him an email reminding him homework was due. I apologized and asked if there was anything else I could do for him, maybe his laundry, grocery shopping, etc. He stormed out of the classroom. Other students laughed. My favorite has got to be when a student read World War 2 as World War 11. And Kim Jong 2. Commonly known as the father of Kim Jong you know. Two girls. Business majors. Very stereotype why. Around 2010. We should start a website. Where anyone can sign up and simply pay a fee to charge their laptops over the internet. Oh yeah. That's a good idea. No mention of peripherals, so I can only assume, the website hacks into the router you're connected to, turns it into a Tesla coil, and arcs a surge of electricity from the device to your laptop battery. One girl asked if she went $300 over her credit limit, if she would have to pay it back. No, it's free money. First week of college I watched this kid cut in line get confronted by his peers. His response was as far as I'm concerned I'm more attractive than you. No, there's two different types of turkeys one for white meat, one for dark. Civil rights movement was so focused avoiding jive turkeys that actual turkeys got left behind. I went to a college that accepts a lot of foreign students from Japan and China. I couldn't keep track of how many times I heard ah. You, from, Asia know they are Japanese. The poor student would normally respond with Japan China but this one guy just stared blankly at them. The one student turned to his friend I don't think he speaks English. The Asian student, in clear English said I'm from Toronto you freaking idiot. It was great. One time in class a girl was doing a presentation where she described a man from Uganda as African American, and didn't understand why that wasn't right. One time I used the term black when talking about someone from Kenya and my sister-in-law corrected me that I should say African American. The best part is that we live in Europe and the person I was talking moved here about 3 years ago from Kenya and he has never even visited the US. Man you have such a big computer. That thing's gotta take up 6 wifis. He isn't Asian. He's from Japan. In a literature class. Girl. So, all those Greek gods and goddesses, what happened to them? Professor, confused, you mean in the story? Girl, no, like, what happened to them? Professor, I, I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. Girl, like, why are they not around anymore? Did they all die? The whole class was just a stunned silence. They live above the Empire State Building, duh. <laughs> Student, do rocks have DNA? Prof. No rocks are not living. Student. Then how do they reproduce? How is there not only just one rock? This was a 300 level genetics class. Maybe go tell him to sit in on a geology class. We were playing some drinking game. Someone correctly answers a question with Afghanistan. This girl laughs out loud and goes Afghanistan isn't a country. We all turned at once and laughed at her. How many pages do I need to write for the 5 page paper? 
A roommate was leaving early in the morning with his girlfriend. Where ya going? My girlfriend and I are going to watch the sun rise over the ocean. Comma chuckle. Okay. Have fun. So for clarification. This is the west coast we are talking about. The guy comes back later p. You knew it wasn't going to rise over the ocean. Didn't you? Maybe. He pauses. Well which days does it rise over the ocean? Comma trying not to laugh. Try tomorrow. In my boyfriend's speech communication class a guy got up to give his speech. It was obvious he didn't have one prepared. He started with alright. Ladies raise your hand if you are single. So the reason you ladies are single is you need to lower your standards. He then called a super athletic. Good looking classmate to the front and said you keep going for these guys when you should be going for and proceeds to call the super obese guy in the class to the front. I can't make this crap up. Similar thing happened in my communication class. They were p easy to pass speeches. Like people were passing with minute long gaps between saying anything in the 3 minutes long speeches. Only one person failed by bringing up how gay marriage should be illegal because it causes people to make love to animals. She didn't understand why the lecturer was trying to cut it short. I don't know why I thought this was so funny but a kid on my floor needed to borrow a screwdriver to undo his window and couldn't get it to unscrew while saying to himself lefty tighty righty loosey. In Germany we say, so lange das Deutsch Reich bestet, word die scrub nach rechts jedret which means, as long as the German Reich exists, the screw will be turned to the right. It's politically not correct but easy to remember. A friend of mine was taking a part to printer in the IT lab and another friend turned to see him opening it up and yelled don't drink the ink completely seriously, because that's how dumb he thought the first friend was, that he would immediately drink printer ink if given a chance. This week in Kevin goes to college. The topic of fellatio came up while the professor stepped out, after a good 12 minutes of talking about technique, preferences, past experiences. A male student finally says I'll never see M in a girl's mouth though. I wouldn't want to get her pregnant. He was absolutely serious. While my then girlfriend was at uni she lived with an alcoholic. To try and stop him from drinking they got him hooked on smoking in an effort to change his addiction. Her words to me were, he had an alcohol problem so we got him smoking. Now he is an alcoholic that smokes. Let me get pregnant so I can cure our love making problems. I once had to tell another student, a grown butt adult, that Canada does indeed stretch from sea to sea, and we don't live in the freaking hills. This is at a regular butt community college in California. She said she thought it was an east coast thing. Canada. She thought that freaking Canada was only a thing on the east coast of the North American continent. A friend of mine moved into a new place at the start of his second year, and threw a big house party to celebrate. It was great. It was wild. Fun was had. While nothing got broken, his living room got messed up quite a bit. Pillows all over the place. Chair tipped over. I think someone made a fort out of pizza boxes. Anyway, I go round this dude's house about 5 months later, and the living room is largely in the same state I last saw it in at that party. In fact, so was lots of the house. It had barely been cleaned. Bold was on a ton of their dishes, and there was a mushroom growing out of the wall in the bathroom. I asked him why the heck hadn't they tidied any of it up, and he said, we figured we'd have another party again soon, so why bother cleaning up? Six of my guy friends rented a place together during school. Their place was so filthy that when I was over I would walk across the street to use the bathroom. A gas station bathroom. Teacher, name a country beginning with E. Classmate, euthanasia. For reference, I live in England. Professor was demonstrating the need for quality checks. Asked several students to measure a piece of paper that was normal. Printer paper sized. One kid was supposed to measure in inches another was supposed to measure in centimeters. Kid who measured in centimeters said the paper was 108 centimeters long. Now this is regular paper. One foot long on its longest day. This fellow did not even think twice before saying it was over a meter long. Nobody even picked up on this until it was remeasured for a quality check. Mind blowing. That turned out to be a great demonstration for why we need quality control. I love breast cancer, because it makes everything pink. This one is the the absolute dumbest I've read so far. The other day I heard a girl giving a speech over nicotine addiction. 
This was supposed to be informative and have credible sources. I kid you not. I do not believe that cigarettes are addictive. I tried them once. I am not addicted. I had to try very hard to not start laughing. A credible source was a requirement for this assignment. But professor, I am a credible source. Me. What's your major? Guy. It was aerospace engineering. Me. Whoa. That's cool but what do you mean was? Guy. I'm on academic probation with the university because my GPA is too low. So I'm switching majors. Me. Okay I'm sorry to hear that. What are you switching to? Guy. Religious studies. I can get a job as a pastor. Me. Alright. So you are big into church? Guy. No. I rarely go but I can worry about that later. Oh my god. This is the perfect example of what happens when you tell teenagers that everybody needs to go to college. <laughs> Had a class about crime and physical assault. Lecturer was going over a study that stated that on average, men were physically stronger than women. Girl raised her hand and said that chauvinistic. Citing that women bodybuilders and crap exist. We had done 3 years of stats by that point. How she did not know the difference between averages, outliers or distributions was beyond me. The poor lecturer looked dumbfounded. Canada passed a law that changed the status of some of the legalities around prostitution and a girl in my class asked the professor before class now that prostitution is legal should I put it on my resume? The collective face palm was heard around campus. A girl in my English class wrote that legalizing gay marriage will create 800 million new jobs in the United States. A TAFE or calculus at a UC did a few examples of use substitution before the professor taught it in class. Several students were amazed and asked, dude, did you invent use substitution? If fish don't have lungs, how do they breathe? I'm a second year biology student. They find air bubbles before the scary music gets too intense. Before class started, a few of us were talking about various states we had been to. One mentioned Alaska being attached to Canada. This prompted a girl to chime in that Alaska is an island. She apparently thought that Alaska and Hawaii were located at the southwest corner of the US like they are portrayed in the maps that just show the 50 states. We shouldn't have to vaccinate men for HPV because it doesn't hurt them I actually had this argument with a peer and a professor. They still didn't understand it in the end. We are all scientists. If you cheat on your girl once a month for a year, you're still 97% faithful. Math checks out. 1. At least 4 students in my class listed Jesus as sin as a tenet of Eastern Orthodoxy in their papers. They plagiarized each other. 2. Everybody knows that black caucuses are bigger than white caucuses. That was an entertaining US Gov class. That second one is something special. It should have been nurtured until they put it in an essay. Then you could frame it on your wall for all your friends to gather around and laugh at. Not necessarily something they said, but my friend was in an online course and they had to write a simple paragraph about themselves as a first assignment. Someone got caught plagiarizing. What's the best thing you've accidentally trained a pet to do? Like a behavior that is specifically from interaction with you and couldn't just be a quirk or learn themselves. We used to have rats that were allowed to run around on the sofa when we were watching TV. They were not allowed on the nearby shelves full of hardcover books. We accidentally taught them the word bookcase, which they thought was a verb meaning turn around and scuttle back the way you came. Right now, mine all also learn their names and the word rat. Rat omg tat means me. I never make any effort to teach them. They just pick up on what words you use when you pet and feed them. Ours know the kissy noise since we usually give them treats and make the kissy noise. They'll come if you kiss. When my old cat was a kitten he would get in your face when you were eating and try to steal stuff off your plate fork mouth. Squirt bottle came into play and after a few days he realized if he stood by the xbox we would not squirt him and he could plan an attack. I had three brothers growing up who loved to torment my main coon. I made the rule they couldn't touch him on my bed. They would chase him through the house and he would make a huge flying leap onto my bed. One bedroom for four kids, and then whip around and just glare daggers at them, knowing he was safe. I swear it only took him a week to figure it out. I've accidentally trained my mother-in-law's terrier to sit on my shoulder like a parrot. He lets me walk around like that. I think he enjoys being carried and the change of perspective.
I first read that as you trained your mill to sit on your shoulder like a parrot lol. My dog Blue is a hunting dog, but is also a huge couch hound and loves cuddling. She sleeps with me a lot but if she gets in bed before me, she takes up the entire bed. I usually make her sit, let me get in bed and get comfy, and then she can come up. The other night I was in bed earlier than usual because I wasn't feeling well, and all of a sudden had a horrible feeling I was being watched. Creeped out. I was looking around for my phone when I heard this weird groaning noise. I immediately grabbed my phone and shined my flashlight towards the noise, only to see just Blue's eyes peeking at me over the edge of my bed. I accidentally trained her to wait until I gave her the okay to come up with me. I have no idea how long she was there, and I was cracking up when I realized what was happening. I've been booping my tiny tabby since she was a kitten. She sits beside me on the arm of the sofa whenever I watch TV, as this usually results in treats. One day, to my joyful surprise, she gently booped my nose with her hand. This overwhelming display of cuteness naturally earned her a treat, so now I'm plagued by boops on the regular. One of my cats does this, too. It's pretty adorable, unless she does it when I'm sleeping. When I put my dog's harness on him, he jumps up with his front feet. He started this because I lift his front two feet up to make him step into it. He only does it for me, not for my girlfriend. My dog does that too. It's actually really helpful though. The noise of the Xbox turning off. When the dog hears that boo boo bing noise he goes freaking up a shit thinking he's getting taken on a walk. To be fair, he usually is. Bro I have two cats and two dogs. One of the cats will turn off my Xbox occasionally if she wants attention. When I put on lipstick the dog goes in his crate. I can do all sorts of things in the bathroom, but that last step of lipstick and he knows it's time to get going. Definitely read when I put lipstick on the dog. My wife and I lived in a condo and whenever one of us went upstairs we announced it. Like I'm going upstairs, then go. So one day my wife is trying to snack on something and our dog was bothering her and she got fed up and scoldingly said go upstairs. Up the stairs he went where he sat and stared at her as if nobody ever feeds him and one little bite would mean the world. I need a picture of sad dog. Alright this may be a bit hard to describe, but I'll do my best. Growing up my family had a dog named Jock, along with some other dogs that came and went. The back door of our house led into our kitchen, and we had a wooden dog door in the back door. Sometimes, when the dogs were outside for whatever reason, and my mother was cooking, Jock would put his snout right up to the crack in the dog door and inhale as deeply as possible, trying to get whiffs of the food. So my mom found this so annoying she would open the door to shut him up. I guess this happened enough times that he learned to do this loud slow inhalation routine whenever he wanted to be let inside. But then he also extended his method to every door in the house. Whenever he wanted a door open, he would stick his nose right up to the crack under the door and inhale deeply, repeatedly. He did this for at least 5 years, until the day he died, and it worked, because the sound of something sucking air through your door for several minutes was incredibly annoying. I love this one. Hilarious. I had a budgie who was impossible to train, but he chirped twice after anyone in the house sneezed. It was his form of bless you. There's a lot of crosswalks around my neighborhood and I always stop at them and look both ways. Some reckless ass drivers in my neighborhood too. My dog has adopted this technique too. She'll sit and either look down the street or at me at every crosswalk until I go to walk. A little bit of preface. I hate pants. I'm more of a skirt or dress type of person. My energetic sheepherd a husky mix knows if I have pants on it means I'm taking her for a hike. Now whenever I'm seen in pants she freaks out, jumping up and down and running to the front door. In the winter I have a specific set of ultra warm pants that I wear when walking my dog. They're my dog walk in pants, and when they come out, who boy my dog loses it. I get really excited when my boxer, Layla, bends herself like a kidney bean when I get home. She's really excited, I'm really excited, so when I squeal, do your bean. Layla it just perpetuates itself. I love Layla. After watching me retrieve the incoming mail from the letter slot over time, our cat, a big, male Maine Coon, delivers it to me. As I noted some time ago, he grabs each letter in his teeth and brings it to where I'm sitting. Bigger pieces get batted with his strong paws. 
If there's a piece too heavy, he sits at my feet, looking back to the letter slot, and MROWs loudly till I go fetch. Our half main coon would just put the mail in her dang water bowl. She does play fetch though. Before I walk my dog, I usually use the bathroom. My dog takes that as a signal to prance around the house excitedly, because walkies. Every time I use the bathroom and don't follow through with getting his harness, he looks disappointed in me. When I say housey times my dog gets in his crate, it wasn't intentional, but now it's his cue. Mine does the same for time to go to bed. Two of my cats like to hiss and spit and battle each other a lot. It's annoying, and we feel bad for the older one. So whenever we hear them yowling we look to the dog and say, Go check it out and she runs to break up the cat fight. My two cats like to battle each other. The older one didn't make a sound the first four years we had her. She has learned since we got the younger one that when she yowls we'll come check on her, pet her, and separate the younger cat from her. She now yowls all the time when close to little bro. Even when she is the aggressor or they're not even touching. I've unintentionally trained my cat to ask to come into my room. He's not allowed and because I'm technically allergic, I used to put a fan pointing across the door to my room and he hates fans. He would yell at me and I'd either say no or move the fan to let him in. I've since moved the fan and he still asks to come in unless I'm not there and then he just wanders in. This accidentally also taught him what no means and he tries to argue occasionally. I'm not sure how she learned it, but one of my cats talks back when she hears her name. Get down, or no. My dog farts when he wants attention. Every time he would fart, my GF and I would laugh and tell him he is a good boy. Now he'll come up to me, sit, wag his tail, and let a few toots out. Not sure if it's his short fur or just his anatomy, but they're almost always audible. You can't just tell us this and not provide a video to go along with it. I taught our old dog to run by saying super puppy away. My mom also accidentally taught the same dog, walk pretty instead of heel. That one was fun to say in public. My cat doesn't mind the rain, and sometimes would come in soaking wet, so I'd towel him off. He loves being toweled off and now insists that I rub him with a towel anytime it rains. He just didn't make the connection that he has to be wet for towel rubs. Ha, huh. another commenter said that they fed their cat so he would let them dry him after being in the rain, so he'd go out in the rain on purpose to get extra food. When my childhood cat would bite us or my parents, my mum would put her outside as punishment. When she felt like going outside, she'd come and bite us. Oh no, I taught my cats not to bite by yelling out when they were kittens. I'm fostering some kittens now and doing the same thing. But when I yell out one of my grown up cats comes over to make sure I'm okay. When my dog was a puppy he followed my husband everywhere including the bathroom which had a big walk in shower. After a couple weeks when my husband would go to the bathroom the dog would follow him and pee in the shower. Eventually going in there whenever he had to go. Wasn't really mad because at least it wasn't on the carpet. Puppy also taught himself how use the ice maker to get fresh ice too. He's way too smart for his own good. My lab jumped up on the water ice dispenser when she was a puppy, just hit it with her foot. That shot of water between the eyes has prevented this from ever happening again. I'm just glad she didn't hit the ice pedal instead because she loves ice cubes. I'm delighted that the cats know they're being bad when I say excuse me. It started with excuse me. What's going on here? Nice. I have one that back talks when I yell her name. Sometimes even when she isn't doing anything I can shout her name just to get a reaction. I managed to teach my cat to kiss people on accident. I've only had her for about 2 months now. She gets ready to do it before you leave or as you are entering into the house because she watched my boyfriend and I kiss when we would leave the house or come home from work and I guess she felt left out. I just tap on my chest for her to leap up and pucker my lips so she will put her mouth on my nose and do a small lick. I am chronically ill and have an autoimmune disease that causes my blood pressure to crash while upright and pass out frequently. Certain exercises are important to stop from passing out frequently so I hike daily with my dog. After passing out a bunch on hikes, and at home, my dog somehow has learned to warn me by standing close to my hand and staring at me on our hikes when my blood pressure is getting low and my heart rate is increasing to tell me to sit lay down before I pass out. It's become super helpful. 
one of my cat paws at the door of the dryer because she wants to be brushed. Put her up there a couple of times as a kitten so I didn't have to bend to brush her and now she meows and runs into that room to tap the dryer door. It opens downward so she can jump on the door and up to the top by herself for brush time. There's a string of bells hanging off the back door handle. One of the other cats rings the bell when he wants out. I figured his logic is. Door opens. Bell rings therefore ring bell. Door opens. I accidentally trained my dog to eat spiders. I have a deathly fear of spiders and any time I see one I usually scream and yell spider. The scream would always get my dog's attention and she'd come running. Then she'd see the spider and eat it. Now anytime you just say the word spider she starts looking around for one and will eat it if she finds it. My rabbit, Poe, will only exit his cage when given the go ahead, a nod, and as soon as he does, he binkies twice then sits in my lap, every, single, time. AWW, so polite. My pup hears the bleeping sound of the Xbox One turning off and he runs directly for bed. He knows the system being shut off means it's bedtime. Every time I make finger guns at my cat, she flips over like I shot her but I have no idea where she picked it up from lol. What's the stupidest thing a teacher ever did at school? In 8th grade, a girl was known for her long hair and which apparently was never cut in her life. Well my math teacher at the time took some scissors and snipped some of it off for fun and didn't think it was a big deal. Yeah, she got fired. This happened to me in the 3rd grade. My headband broke and I was pushing my hair from my face. She jumps up with scissors and cuts my hair. Parents went to the school. I was pulled from her class. Week later she does it to another student. Her father went ballistic on her and the principal. Teacher was fired. This was 1980s in Colorado. Still makes me cry when I think about it. I had a teacher cut their finger off with a paper guillotine while demonstrating how to safely use it. In their defense it worked wonders as everyone was so traumatized by what could happen that no one messed around with the guillotines. Ever. I was sitting here thinking about how a guillotine made of paper could do anything to someone's hand. I really am an idiot. When I was in third grade my teacher wrote 1 2 equals on the chalkboard. I said minus 1. She told me the correct answer is that it doesn't work out. I am still mad about this 16 years later. First grade teacher, no number can be less than 0. Classmate, but what about the numbers on the thermometer? Teacher, those numbers are different. When my friend, kindergarten student, really really needed to go to the toilet and they said no. A few minutes later he asked again saying he really needed to go. Number. Then he a few minutes later he just wet himself and got scolded. I've always told my kids to go if you have to, even if the teacher tells you no. Threw a textbook at a kid who made a joke about her mother. Killed her career. At least it wasn't the kid. Had an affair with a 17 year old pupil, then left her job, husband and three children to go and live with him in a different city. I had a teacher who made us do this assignment where we would come up with an opinion on anything, and then he would argue the opposite viewpoint. After the first three people it became apparent he just wanted to stroke his own ego, a man in his early 60s arguing yelling with 13 year olds. He was really putting people down too. One of my friends was 20th of 30 to be called on. She said, I don't think the holocaust should have happened. He lost his freaking mind. He sent her to the office. And the assignment was over for the day. Read a chapter from the book in silence. She was a legend. Class trip. My GR8 teacher is known as a weird person. During a camp trip with the class, we were separated into boys girls for obvious reasons. With our own bathrooms and shower area. During one night, while the girls were showering, my teacher, who was a 50 plus year old man, Decided it would be a funny joke to take pictures of the girls underneath the shower doors. Tried to say he wanted them for the yearbook. And to see their surprised reactions of these candid pictures. Needless to say, big problem. But no matter how many times he'd been reported, nothing ever happened. Too many stories about this teacher that should have had legal action. From rubbing the inner thigh of a student in his car. To being bulls out in a kilt and propping his leg up on a desk like Captain Morgan. What the frick? My 8th grade science teacher started to beat the crap out of one of the students, it is okay to do that in India at least back then. This kid was big, 
At some point during the beating he started to hit back and pretty soon it turned into a full-fledged kickboxing. The kid beat the crap out of teacher. I can't even imagine a teacher hitting my child, let alone what I'd say if my child beat up the teacher for hitting him. My brother's science teacher put a decently sized piece of sodium in a beaker of water and was shocked when it exploded and shattered the beaker. But my teacher did something similar, except he used reasonable sized pieces first, and we kept mocking him for being a wuss. So he put a big bit in to crap us up, and it flew out and hit one of the students. Luckily, he wasn't burned too badly and we decided not to mention it because the teacher was a great laugh and it would have been a shame if he got in trouble. We had a teacher that was always chewing gum. Whenever his gum fell in the blackboard shelf, he would take that chalk coated thing and put it right on his mouth again. Plot twist, the chalk on the shelf wasn't chalk. I was 7 years old and was taking a basic spelling quiz in class. My teacher counted every word wrong, even though they were all correct, because I put a period after every word. Obviously there's no need for a period, but 7 Wyomi was thinking well. I was taught to always put a period after the last word of a sentence. Young me was just confused more than anything. My mom actually called in to complain which never happened. She typically didn't get involved when I got involved in conflict at school. That's when it clicked how stupid it was for the teacher to do that. Instead of the teacher approaching me and saying you see, kid off runner. Periods aren't necessary here. Don't do that anymore she just confused the crap out of me. Question on a test in elementary school. What is a shadow? My answer. An area with less light. Teacher's correction. Wrong. An area with no light. One of my high school English teachers separated the class into two groups. Good kids and bad kids. She would only teach the good kids and let the bad kids do whatever they wanted because she couldn't control them. I'll give a little bit of backstory. My younger brother has some learning disabilities and it led him to having trouble learning to tie shoes. He didn't learn until roughly first or second grade. Well he had this 60-70 year old kindergarten teacher and in the first week she called my mom and to discuss my brother. She went off about how he's a terrible student and this and that. She hadn't bothered to read his file as he had been in speech therapy and the like from 2 years old. And it really upset my mom. The worst part of it is at the end of this she had the audacity to give my mom his gym shoes which were velcro and say he will need new gym shoes as we don't allow retard shoes in this class. Needless to say her teaching career didn't last too much longer after that. I had teachers that weren't that bad but said some pretty awful crap about my brother who is on the spectrum. One of my teachers asked me to deliver a note to one of the gym teachers. When I got to the teacher's office I knocked on the door so I could be let in. The teacher lost it. Do you not know how to knock correctly? That was very rude. To show me the correct way to knock she sends out her aide who goes outside. Closes the door and knocks the exact same way I did. The teacher then says see the difference? How much nicer that was. Me. Number. Sounds the exact same as I knocked. Here's your note. Bye. Lady was a psycho. My old English teacher ripped out a blood sugar monitor thinking it was an iPhone kid in my class had diabetes. As he was walking towards the student everyone was shouting that it wasn't an iPhone. He didn't listen and ripped it out. The kid had to go to the school nurse and the teacher lost his job because of it. My kindergarten teacher did not like my self portrait I was drawing so she grabbed my hand and did it for me. My picture did not turn out well. How dare you not make a self portrait that looks like Leonardo da Vinci made it. 10th grade. A girl who hung out with some people in my squad needed to pee. Instructor wouldn't let her leave. Girl asked again. And again. And again. Instructor got peed off and told her he'd give her a week detention if she asked again or left for the bathroom. She did the pee dance in her chair. He pretended not to notice. Suddenly she runs out with her face covered. Crying audibly. He's yelling at her. Until a student tells him to stop. She ended up peeing herself. It was all over her seat and the floor. All because the instructor wanted to assert his dominance. Not sure what happened to the instructor. My chem teacher insisted electricity wasn't invented in the American Civil War. The conversation went like this. Teach. There was no electricity in the Civil War. Class. But they had the telegraph. Right? Teach. Yes. Class. And the telegraph uses electricity. Right? Teach. Yep. Class. So they had electricity. Teach. 
There was no electricity in the Civil War. Was your teacher Patrick Starr? Our chemistry teacher was apparently distracted and, using tongs, placed a hot test tube from the Bunsen burner into a student's bare hand. On the coach trip back from a field trip some of the class were playfully winding the teacher up and he just lost it. He grabbed one of them by the throat and started strangling him. He only stopped when another teacher saw what was going on and calmly but assertively intervened. The teacher realized his mistake immediately and sat himself with the lad's mates and joked with them for the remainder of the journey in the hope that they wouldn't report him. It worked too. I can't believe the other teacher didn't report him. I was helping out at a primary school, 6-7 year olds in this class, and the teacher was teaching basic maths. The topic was rounding numbers and she insisted that the children should round down from 6 to the nearest 10. From 5 and up you're meant to round up. I was a 13 year old volunteer and felt unable to publicly correct her, though I really wanted to. One of my female teachers said to our primary 7 class okay, a lot of you have been coming up to me and asking for help. I am your teacher, it's not my job to help you when you're stuck. Yes, really. She tried to tell us a trick to spell athlete was at, he, la, t, everybody just wrote it down. I kept looking at it, that's not right is it? I looked it up in a dictionary that I could reach and raised my hand. She got embarrassed and gave me a hard time after that like I was showing her up. What did I do? You're the one who was telling us the wrong thing kick a student. This was our chemistry teacher that a lot of students hated, mainly due to her grading and teaching style. She gave the AP, advanced placement, exam to students in her class who were completely lost. One day while talking to a few high school friends I heard that they fired her because she kicked a student. I completely understood that a student didn't take her crap and she decided it was a good idea to kick him. Had a history teacher in high school who was cream of the crop. Well versed about subjects and made history very fun. Extremely popular with students. With the majority of the school's teachers approaching retirement, this guy had the chance to become, at age 35, a top ranked school's flagship teacher. Came out after I graduated that there were reports of inappropriate relations with a couple underage students, reports meaning these students confessed to our guidance counselor that they had been in those relationships with him. He and the school underwent a conscious uncoupling, and he's still unemployed right now, despite these issues not being made public. Really, really, really stupid thing to do. Twice the pride, double the fall. Our math teacher basketball coach watched that movie Coach Carter a few too many times, and started trying to be that guy from the movie. The first thing he did to try and make us have self-respect was forcing every guy in the classroom to tuck in their shirt. When someone pointed out he wasn't tucking in his shirt, he said the rules don't apply to him. Someone else suggested it's because he's not a guy. He lost his mind because he knew the only way out was to tuck his shirt and or be ridiculed by 14 year olds for the rest of the year. He took the high road and got insulted every now and then. Also he stopped forcing people to tuck in their shirts after that. We had an older teacher who was a few screws short of a dozen. A pigeon flew into his classroom one day he decided to chase it out. He didn't just swat at it or guide it with a broom or something. No his bright idea was to imitate it and try to coax it into the hall. So he starts flapping his arms and queuing. He eventually gets it to the hall and then realizes oh I can't just leave a bird here so he proceeds to chase it down the hall towards the stairwell to the roof access, while still attempting to take off and signal his flock. The fact that this was his first response to having an avian guest audit his history class leads me to think it wasn't the first time this happened. It was a tough teaching season for bird person. One of our math teachers got a student pregnant. Sounds like a multiplication lesson. Once, while in Spanish class, our Spanish teacher got mad at us for not knowing something that she was about to teach us. Yes, you did read that right. A teacher got mad about something we didn't know, and the best part was that she acknowledged that this was a new subject. Then she asked if we knew anything about the subject, and then went on a 5 minute rant about why we should know this. I love school. I wish I was joking about this. This happened in a preschool classroom in like 94ish. Some context beforehand. I had just had some dental work the day or so prior because I facilitated on the sidewalk. 
So I'm in classroom with 30 or so kids eating our usual lunch. That day cut up hot dogs and mac and cheese were on the menu. I think I ate a bite or two and realized, ouch this isn't working. I remember this vividly. I walk to the trash can throw my paper plate full of food, food first onto a pile of other kids food. Well, the teacher or assistant didn't like that I wasted food and didn't eat so they scooped in all back up on the plate and pretty much forced me to eat it. I did. They didn't physically force me, because I didn't want to get in trouble, crying the whole time and yet, yeah. told my mom after school she stormed in the office and raised her considering she had discussed this prior, still pees me off. A coach subbing for a teacher who was out, pulled a VCR tape from the cabinet labeled Rocky 3, I think, for us to watch so he didn't have to teach us. He was having problems getting the VCR on the TV cart to work and around back asking the class to see if it was working and we were like no. Then he heard the video started to play it was a porno called the Tower of Power. Not ever looking at the screen he just sat down at his desk to relax. He couldn't see the screen from the where his desk was but he heard the woman say frick me he quickly shut off the tape. He took it immediately to the principal and the tape was destroyed or so they said and the teacher was fired on his day off. Now this happened in 1992 or 1993 and you can end the Tower of Power adult film from 1985. Holy moly that must have been shocking for the sub and confusing f for the kids. Teacher of AV left a tape of himself in the VCR of his pet project, which was apparently him laying on a bed in his underwear screaming at an aquarium. I'm a pretty short person due to a problem with my spine so during high school I was a lot shorter than most people in my class. Our school had this rule that you had to stand up when the teacher came in and do the whole good morning miss whoever routine before being allowed to sit down. On one particular day we had a substitute teacher who immediately called me out for not standing up. And when I told her I was, she snapped at me for not respecting her. Now the rest of the class were well aware that I was just short so they tried to tell her I was on my feet. But she just wasn't having it. She just continued yelling at all of us and threatening detentions if we didn't start showing respect. It went on until she lost it and came stomping around the table to prove I was still sitting. To find that I was actually on my feet. She kind of just cleared her throat, went quiet and avoided eye contact with me for the rest of the class. Even to this day her insistence that she was right and everyone else was wrong completely baffles me. In college one of my education professors would tell a story about a teacher who, on his very first day of teaching no less, freaked out because the police wanted to do a random K9 drug search in his classroom. He was going off about how his students were good kids and how they would never have drugs. At one point he dragged the cop aside and told him that he knew for a fact that one of the kids had drugs and he was trying to help the kid. But if the cop found the drugs it would destroy the kid's future. The cop ignored him and searched the room anyway. They found drugs in the teacher's bag. None of the kids had drugs. The teacher is now unemployed. That cop knew the score. We had a teacher in 4th grade who threw a shoe at a sleeping kid. This wasn't back in the day when that was okay either, and the lady who threw it was like mid 30s. Oh, we had a smart board at one point, those kind that need special markers. We had a sub one day, who let us know she knew we were all troublemakers, and that she wouldn't listen to a dank thing we would say. At one point, she picks up an expo marker, which our normal teacher had set across the room from the smart board to keep them clearly separate. We try to tell her not to use it, but she literally screams at us until we are quiet. Then she draws all over the board, and tried to erase it. The entire class got detention for misleading the sub. It held up for all of one class as we texted our parents about it. By the end of that class, three people, myself included, hadn't been checked out of school. All of our parents' legal guardians were raising heck in the office. Eventually, detention was lifted and we all got apologies from the staff. The sub had to give a speech to us, apologizing to our faces. Admittedly, we probably all were a bit smug. But she lost it, started yelling racial slurs at us, called a few of us drug addicts and w, then finally, I'm not kidding, climbed out of a window and left, never saw her again. Worked in tech services, IT, kindergarten teacher took the kids to the library and put them all on computers, talked to the kids about birds, specifically the blue footed booby, then told the kids to search google for pictures of boobies called us in tears because she was sure she was going to get fired.
I know some people can be oblivious, but you can't not tell me that the idea of you sitting down a class of kindergartners and tell them to look up something something boobies on the computer didn't ever raise a red flag. What is the sickest burn you have seen a teacher give to a student? Talking about percentage of skin on the body if you get burned in health class, it was something like 18% on the back and chest, 18% for both arms and 18% for both legs, then 1% for genitals and 10% for your head and neck. A kid who we will call Bubba shouts out don't you mean 5% for genitals he chirped wheel for you.5% Bubba, pretty shocked, just goes excuse me the teacher just yelled really loud, your penis Bubba, I tease tiny, that is what I said. Dang that's like a 100% off skin level burn. Student constantly skips class. Teacher, where's Justin? Student, I can call him if you want. Teacher, do it, calls Justin. Teacher, hey, Justin where are you when you should be in my class? Justin, you can tell he's a little freaked out. Up, uh, McDonald's. Teacher, pick up an application. Click. I hope he doesn't burn the fries too. What's sex ed said sarcastically by a 15 year old in my class? Science teacher OHH it's fine you won't need it for another 20-30 years. The class was laughing the rest of the lesson. Student. Can we postpone the math test? It's on my birthday. Teacher. Well unlike your birthday this math test was planned ahead of time. She ie it. My high school math teacher had 3 adopted children. He was also the econ teacher. Bad move. But oh well. And one day he was talking about loan repayment, etc. He used the example of the loans that he'd gotten to pay the adoption costs for his kids, and quoted some ridiculously high number. I am also adopted, and the number he gave was way higher than what my parents told me it costed to adopt my brother and me. I raised my hand and said this, and he goes, well, yeah you were probably on sale. I laughed so hard I cried. He must have thought I was offended, because he felt really bad about it and apologized later. He was actually crying when he apologized, but I told him it was probably the funniest thing anyone had ever said about me being adopted. Why did I get an F on this assignment? Well that was the lowest grade I could give you. In history class, we're in the middle of an understandably somber section about the holocaust and concentration camp conditions and one student decides it'd be the perfect time to fire off a Jewish joke. The teacher just turned around slowly and said, that's impressive, student, what's impressive, Mr. S. Well here I am talking about Mengel and Hitler, not to mention all of the other Nazis, and yet you somehow still managed to be the least likable person in today's class. Literally worse than Hitler. We were taking a quick 20 question multiple choice quiz a few years back in a bio class and the teacher suspected one of the stoner kids in the back had been cheating because he kept messing with his shorts. I hope you aren't sliding that pant leg up to check the answers you have written down. The student piped back, yeah of course I have them all written on my dong. And without missing a beat the teacher fired back, alright well where did you write the other 18 answers? The PE teacher walked into the boys locker room when my friend was giving another one gum and asked what drugs are handing there. Friend, they are steroids. You want some you look like you need them. Teacher, no thanks. They don't seem to be working. Student, trying to be intimidating. Don't get me angry. You won't like me when I'm angry. Teacher, nobody likes you anyway. Context, student has turned in a lousy paper. Student, come on. I bet you did papers the night before when you were in college. Prof, yeah, but I'm smarter than you. I've said basically the same thing to my students. You can write a paper the night before if you've done all the research and other work. Basically if you've become smart enough. My teacher was a bit sarcastic and would often joke with us. Both of these were about me, but I love them. 1. What is the difference between Gorham Rivers and a calendar? A calendar has a future. 2. Me reading a Snapple cap. Huh. The average human dream lasts 30 seconds. Teacher O. Oh, Gorham Rivers. You make it too easy. Me what do you mean? Teacher if the average human dream only lasts 30 seconds. Why are you still thinking of going to college? Jesus that second one. I. Wow. 
on my end of year report card that I had to take home to my parents. One of my teachers wrote I shall miss Goodly Lawful's cheerful presence in my class, as well as his ever more creative excuses for the non-production of work. I came back the next year after I got an A on the national exam for his class, and caught him telling a group of prospective students if Goodly Lawful can ace this course, anyone can. Ouch, that second one is cruel. Teacher goes to turn the AC down. Kid in my class. Thank you. You read my mind. Teacher, it was a short book. James. Get away from that window. Everyone will think this is a special school. Freshman health in college. Professor is talking about cardio exercise and wants examples of them. Some kids blurts out sex to which the professor's replies I don't think I'd consider 2 minutes of sex a cardiovascular workout no more smart ass remarks from that guy. G 9th grade biology. We are learning about how when a sperm meets an egg, it creates a cell called a zygote. This girl raises her hand to ask, so do I have a zygote in me right now he responds, I don't know what goes on in your personal life, Kelly. I had a teacher that would write ouch next to all my wrong answers on a test. You seem to be a bit of an intellectual snob. Your academic performance makes me wonder why. Whole class gasped. To shreds you say. Student. I forget why. I'm going to be one of the people running the world. By then. I'm the future. Teacher. That's like reminding me that I'm going to die. Only more depressing. Double quote. With no regard for human life. A friend and I were visiting my English teacher after class and my friend was showing her a picture of her shoes and making sure they were appropriate for graduation. Teacher, those are fine. I just meant don't wear any H shoes. Me. AWW. I bought the cutest H shoes and now I can't wear them S. Teacher, no. You'll have to save that for your job. Set my dumb ass up on that one. In 6th grade Latin. Our teacher called a mischievous student a wart on the ass of progress. I've always loved that. So we are in pay and our teacher is new to the school but taught in juvie for a while and had several tattoos. So she played around with us but in the end took no crap. We're sitting in the bleachers one day and she leans back and undoes her hair. She always kept it in a bun or something. One of the students, among the more rowdy of us, she tolerated him. Barely, then shouts down at her hamies. Name here. You look better with your hair down she stops, looks at him and goes yeah, well you look better with my eyes closed the bleachers erupted. Kid was sticking an eraser in a bunsen burner with a pair of tongs. Science teacher told him to stop because the fumes can give you brain cancer. Then she added on second thoughts it's probably too late for you to worry about that. Student's name. You're my second favorite student of all time. Everyone else is tied for first. In a sea of rude and offensive comments in this topic this one was actually very clever and funny. Jonathan, you were one of the babies the Spartans would have thrown down the mountain. So I had a friend in HS who wore khaki pants and a collared shirt to school pretty much every day. One day he was leaning over some kid's desk helping him with something, and his ass sticking way out, just tempting someone to run over and smack it. And another friend, James, does just that. He runs over and lands a perfect, incredibly loud slap square on the butt cheeks. On him that made him bolt to standing up immediately. Fortunately for every else in the class except for James, it wasn't my friend but the teacher, who also wore khakis and collared shirts to school every day. Everyone goes silent, and the teacher turns around, bright red, but with a big smile on his face and says, James, save that for after class. Everyone bursts out laughing and the kid, of course, never lived it down. That was the dress code at my high school. I had math last period, so we usually had the last few minutes to pack up and chill out. One girl, who would always be on her phone in class, calls to order food before she goes to work. The teacher took notice, and when she had to give her phone number to the place he wrote it down. About a week later when she was texting while he was lecturing he just stops, goes to his desk, and calls her to tell her to get off her phone. The look of confusion on her face was priceless. I went to a college where we wore military-like khaki uniforms. For Halloween one year a buddy and I switched uniforms. He was a marine that worked very hard at keeping his uniform absolutely perfect. 
and I was a slacker that wore more baggy versions of the required khaki. As we went to class one teacher realized the switch, looked right at my buddy in my uniform and said you fricked up already. You showed up on time. Good times. After a particularly bad group project presentation that basically just failed to touch on anything relevant to the core subject his review was I asked you for a painting. You gave me a frame. That's a great metaphor. Kid walked into history class and said, Sir, what movie are we watching today? Teacher turned around and said blankly, I don't know. Has your mom made a new one? Whole class was in tears for about 5 minutes. Our math teacher placed a book on the marker tray of the whiteboard with an arrow on the board connecting the book to the sentence. Marker's biography. The book was called, The Ugliest Boy. Marker was a student, and was also the teacher's son. This smart ass HS senior in my freshman algebra class V Mr. Capital S. Hey, Mr. S. You've been teaching forever. Getting pretty old aren't you? Ha ha ha. When you gonna give it up? Mr. S. Straight faced like a boss. Oh, IDK Adam. I figure about the time you pass this class. The guy's face was as red as a Santa suit. Greatest first day of school ever. Student calls male teacher gay. Insinuating the teacher wants him I'm not gay. But if I was, I could do a lot better than you. He had no comeback. I was up roaming the classroom, fooling around, when I should have been at my seat. Bio teacher yelled at me and said sit down, you are tilting the room. I am not an extremely big guy but big enough for that remark to make sense. I like to imagine that this teacher had actually eaten quite a large quantity of shrooms and believed what he said wholeheartedly. High school art teacher once asked for a show of hands of who was taking on the course next year with him. A troublemaker put his hand up and the teacher just said number. You behave as well as you look. The class lost their crap after that one. This was in junior high which I think was 8th grade. We had a math teacher who was a bit rotund and rosy cheeked and upon reflection a bit effeminate. As we all know girls of that age can get a bit tightly wound and dramatic. So every time there was a confrontation like that in class, he would sing the teapot song at them with dance move and everything. For those who do not know, I'm a little teapot short and stout. This is my handle this is my spout. When I get all steamed up hear me shout. Tip me over and pour me out. Probably the most effective 14 year old girl diffuser I have ever seen. That was adorable. I was a teacher for a few years some time ago. During my first year of teaching was when Eminem was getting really popular. I had this one student who was very into Eminem. To the point of replicating haircut, hair color, style of dress, etc. This student was also frequently disruptive. One morning, as I was trying to start class, he was standing next to his desk, chatting with another student and totally oblivious to the fact that class was starting, so I look right at him, get his attention, and say, are you the real slim shady up, number then sit down small victories. Student, can I go to the bathroom? Teacher, I don't know, can you? Student, well you could always help me out. Teacher, this isn't a science class, I don't have any tweezers. Double quote, to the burn ward with you. Strong counter for a weak one, nice. Writing a quiz, teacher, okay kid's name, finish up. Kid, I'm thinking, teacher, I thought I smelled burning. Teacher, me and my wife got a new dog and we're trying to think of a name. Student, why not name it butthole? Teacher, that's a good one but every time it'd call my dog you'd come running. My dad was a high school teacher about 30 or 40 years ago. He was pretty young, so his students felt pretty comfortable around him, and felt comfortable messing with him. There was this one student who decided to put a tack on my dad's chair before he came in one morning. My dad noticed it before he sat down, and decided to keep standing. A few minutes into class, the kid got called to the office. My dad took the tack and put it on the kid's chair. When the kid returned, the other students were able to hide their snickering pretty well. He sits down and immediately jumps about 6 feet in the air. The class bursted out laughing. My dad always wins. This was about 2006. Student, the song American Idiot was written about you. Teacher, Boulevard of Broken Dreams was written about your future. This is the one that made me laugh. Sounds like one of my old teachers. 
I once rushed through an AP English essay at the last minute. It was returned to me with a litany of red ink and a question at the end. Why waste this paper? Happy ending. I got a 5 stroke 5 on the actual AP exam. What's the stupidest thing a teacher has tried to tell your child? Teacher once argued with me about how to pronounce my own ding name. 4th grade gym health teacher told us that sleeping on your stomach causes stomach cancer. That's funny. My 3rd grade gym teacher told me that biting chewing the inside of my cheeks, a thinking habit I get from my mother, would give me cancer. I was utterly terrified until I went home to my mom and she told me it was a load of crap. And then my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer some time later. Clearly that's what caused it. I got in a large argument in 7th grade because my teacher wrote a test, with the question being, how many weeks are in a year? He said the answer was 48. Still get angry that I got that wrong. Me. I am going to publish this essay on my FTP server, so I can download it later. School librarian. You are going to do what? Me. I am going to put this on the internet. School librarian. You can't just put stuff on the internet. Her concern was valid. If you were still in school, you were likely not old enough to have been able to acquire an internet publishing license. I'm still saving up for mine. My English teacher once told me that separating was not a word. I got told discombobulated wasn't either. I learned it when I was writing pages from the dictionary for being a smart ass. In third grade our history teacher started talking about Benjamin Franklin. Basically the usual stuff that everyone knows. But then she says how great of a president he was. Well I'm in third grade and I know that's not right. I raise my hand and I tell her that Benjamin Franklin was never a president. The class disagrees with me and so does the teacher but I hold my ground and she looks in her book of presidents and sure enough, I'm right. Most satisfying moment of my life. I the teacher was actually willing to admit she was wrong. That at least makes her infinitely superior to most of the teachers in these stories. The kids in my son's class had to pick a state to do a report on. One of the kids picked Hawaii. The teacher told him he had to pick another one, because Hawaii isn't a state. A substitute tried to tell us that 9-11 was the first time America was attacked on our own soil. Good lord. Stuff like this should be our go-to answer when people question why we should bother to learn history. When my brother was in grade 4, both of his teachers insisted that Mexico was in South America and laughed at him for saying otherwise. When he brought in articles about NAFTA that my mom printed out for him to prove them wrong, they said anyone can say anything on the internet. I had a teacher in a second grade tell our class that Texas is the largest state. I proceeded to attempt to correct her by pointing out that Alaska quite a bit larger than Texas. Her only response was, Alaska doesn't count because it's made of ice. When I was in elementary school, a pay coach insisted that deoxygenated blood was blue. I tried to tell him otherwise. Blood is dark red when it's drawn from a syringe ETC, but he didn't listen. I ended up asking my doctor who burst out laughing and said something to the lines of and that is why he is the pay coach, not your doctor. Not my child, but my father was once told by a high school teacher that the Japanese kamikaze pilots all performed seppuku on themselves right before their planes hit ships in Pearl Harbor. This is 10x more epic than the truth. I was born in France. I moved here when I was 8 year and spoke no English, only knew yes, no, and thank you. I went to a bilingual school for 3rd, 4th, and 5th grade. You learn pretty quickly at that age. My 5th grade teacher was Latin. Don't remember what country she was from but deaf Spanish as a first language. Heavy accent. We were doing grammar one day and she asked me what part of a speech a certain word was. I said it's a verb. Her response, no, it's a verb. I argued with her that for two years I'd been taught that it's verb not verb. She insisted that it was verb and made me say verb the rest of the year. The next year I started middle school at a regular school. Same convo w new teacher and I say it's a verb. Of course everyone, including the teacher, laughed at me. I was like I knew it idiot teacher. My co-worker was told by her son's kindergarten teacher that if she fed him fruit while he had a flu, he'd develop an allergy to the fruit. I nearly pee myself laughing. My teacher insisted there were 100 meters in a kilometer. Huge argument ensued. I won with my facts. Well, there are, 
Also 900 more. Pedantry aside, that's got to be infuriating. My home ec. Teacher tried to convince us that honey was very bad and to always eat white processed sugar. Also fresh cow's milk and fresh eggs are poisonous until processed. After growing up on a ranch in the middle of nowhere and eating all three no nos all my life she called me a liar and said I should have been dead a long time ago. I am dead. And I have come for you to profess all your lies. I don't have children. But I was told in sex ed that condoms do not protect against any STDs. I was always confused as to why gay men wore condoms. I thought it was some sort of fetish. My sister's third grade teacher thought that a baker's dozen was 11. Since the baker ate one. As a baker, I can confirm this. Had a teacher tell me that a gallon was 64 ounces. I told her it was twice that. A security guard came to the door to drop off mail or something. And she asked him. He said 128 oz and the teacher ran from the room sobbing. Right past the very confused guard. Same woman told me that Japan is a communist nation. Japan is an animation nation. In 2004. Back when I was in the 6th grade we had a geography quiz. One of the questions was who Hong Kong belonged to. United Kingdom and China were both answer choices. I answered China and got it wrong. So I asked my teacher about it. She told me that although Hong Kong was technically now part of China, the textbook, which was printed in 1996, said it was still part of the UK, therefore she wouldn't correct my quiz. Why the frick would you put a question like that in a quiz knowing the situation? My 6th grade teacher asked the class for an example of an interesting animal. I said piranha. She said no. Fish aren't animals. That's when I realized she was a complete idiot. My science teacher told me that we'd all die in 50 years when the coal supply ran out. Cue me having a mad panic and bawling my eyes out until my dad told me otherwise. Growing up in the 1890s must have been stressful. My year 9 UK school year, I was 14 year old. Geography teacher insisted that Havana was in Mexico. I had been to Cuba not one year before yet she insisted she was right. She called me to find Havana on the map and find it I did. Chilling there on Cuba's western tip. On the massive map of the world on the wall next to her desk. Okay, sit down now was her response. I lost quite a bit of respect for teachers that day and it was from that point I truly began questioning what people presented to me as fact. If she was wrong about that I thought, what other bulls has she been passing off as fact? She accidentally gave you the beginnings of wisdom. My cousin's teacher asked the class of very young children to name colors of apples. She aced green the teacher said, I mean ripe apples she said, yay green. My mom buys green apples and the teacher made her look like an idiot in class. She got home and told her mom about it and my aunt promptly purchased a Granny Smith apple for each student in the class and came with her to school the next day. My sister's teacher in grade 7 insisted that it was the leaning tower of pizza even after several of the kids told her it was pizza. High school science teacher said Katrina was a twister. I raised my hand and said it was a hurricane. Instead of admitting she made a mistake she continued to defend her original statement. I continued to explain to the class what the differences were and that in fact Katrina was a hurricane with a major fact being it was named. We don't go around naming tornadoes do we the teacher cried. I was an ass when I was younger I guess. Okay this one really pee me off. In my freshman year of high school we were studying US history for about the 7th time, and we were talking about the desegregation of Little Rock High School, AR. We had to do some kind of group work in which we had to write down facts of some sort about the incident. I talked about how President Eisenhower had to send a bit over a thousand US Army troops from the 101 St. Airborne to protect the incoming African American students. The student teacher, basically just the teacher's bee, was walking by and just laughed at my comment. He hated me. I looked at him with a strong sense of confusion, thinking that maybe I got my numbers wrong. And he said, you really think that the 101st Airborne would go to Little Rock High School to protect it? What do you think they did? Flew all their fighters to the high school to protect it? Had overhead the tax on the protesters? Come on Snipuska, be rational here. I tried describing to the student teacher that the 101 St. Airborne isn't the Air Force and that the troops were definitely from that section of the military, but once again he laughed at me. Thankfully we had computers in class, 
So I looked it up, showed him the information, and still thought I was wrong. He still made fun of me for thinking that. You know what, I'm going to send him an email now that I'm gone from that school. There are sharks in the Dead Sea. Somewhat on topic. Back when I was in second grade my parents had just gotten me this awesome messenger bag that had a big sailboat on it. I was super excited and showed my teacher. We needed to have our names somewhere on our backpacks and supplies, usually written on the tags inside, but this bag didn't have any tags. So instead my teacher proceeded to write my name with a permanent marker all over the front of my bag. And she then wrote a letter to my parents saying my school bag was too small and I needed a larger one. I was extremely sad and my parents pee off. Had a substitute teacher that told the class that AIDS would be airborne in the next 3 years. He got mad at me when I said really, because no it isn't. I dig that response. Health and career class tried to say that drugs weren't bad. They related it to coffee then said it was okay to try at parties. When I was in the 7th grade, my teacher failed me on a report that stated Christopher Columbus did not discover the Americas. He landed in the West Indies and the Caribbean Islands. He also was not the first European explorer to eventually visit the Americas. At least one previous explorer, Leif Erikson, preceded him. The teacher stated that I was blatantly making things up to hype my sense of self-importance. I don't believe I had ever been so angry in my life. I had a multiple choice test question in 5th grade that asked if tall buildings were measured in A. Millimeters B. Centimeters C. Meters D. Kilometers I picked meters, which he claimed was incorrect and that the correct answer was kilometers. That led to an argument with my math teacher which in turn led to a parent teacher conference where my parents apparently had a hard time stifling their laughter. I would have just argued that they were all correct because it's a unit of length and therefore suitable for measuring heights. <laughs> Son's third grade assignment, draw your dream house. He got an F because his dream house was unrealistic. He failed another student choice of topic assignment he did on dinosaurs, because dinosaurs weren't real as they weren't in the bible. He got detention when he told her neither were air conditioners. Public school early 90s in rural Texas. My son was in kindergarten, and had an assessment test to determine if he was prepared to continue. I came in afterward for the review. The teachers commented that he did very well, but he missed a question. What's your favorite number? Apparently. He answered infinity and explained clearly why. Yeah, they were looking for a simpler answer like 5. When I told them that in mathematics, it's considered a number. They said it was too high a concept for a child to understand and therefore wrong. How do you get an opinion question wrong? This happened to me rather than my kids. We had a substitute in our kindergarten class who went on a rant about how the holocaust wasn't real and never happened. My best friend was also in my class, and she lost her grandparents in the holocaust. We went home and told our mothers, who showed up together the next morning and by the end of that day, that woman wasn't allowed to substitute in that district anymore. My junior high science teacher along with my entire class were convinced that while skydiving, when you pull the chute, you actually go up. Like the parachute somehow creates lift, almost like a bungee cord. I tried to tell them that it just appears that way because the person filming doesn't pull their chute at the same time and therefore keeps falling at terminal while the parachuter's velocity is significantly reduced. Totally felt like I was on crazy pills. The whole class was yelling at me. We had to take it to a high school physics teacher resolve the argument. When I was 9 years old, my parents divorced, and my new elementary school had a ridiculous in-house therapist. His methods included, coloring a blank chalk outline photo in different colors to show where I felt my emotions. Even as a child, I was irritated. Also, he suggested I kick the wall if I'm ever angry, because the wall doesn't feel pain. I did so, and smashed a 13x10 inches hole through the drywall in my bedroom. You should have kicked a hole in his office wall. Then walked out saying, thanks, I feel so much better, now. This is Kato of Power. If you subscribe, your power level will increase by 64 levels. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.